Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 22nd of July. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first, let's talk about the report of Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. There were a few important notes, a few important updates from the report. And the first one is that the Russians during the previous hours uh, attacked, struck this 59th motorized brigade and as a result of that strike this brigade lost around 30 soldiers and around six armored vehicles so as you can see the geography of the russians is uh, didn't change hasn't hasn't been changed there's still continue attack in Kherson area and seversk uh, the donbas arc area so these are two main areas where the russians are concentrating their rocket and missile attacks another important update um, came from uh, seversk uh, Artemovsk area from Donbas Arc operation. The Russians struck the forces located in Konstantinovka. They attacked uh, the uh, national battalion by the name of Black Hundred. And as a result of that attack, these Black Hundred National Battalion lost around 300 soldiers and around 40 armored vehicles. So as you can see, they had a lot of losses during the previous hours. Now let's talk about South, about Kherson first. Let's start from this area. And the most important update that today the Ukrainian sources announced that the Ukrainians managed to encircle the Russians who is located in Vysokopolye in this area. They told that they told us that they managed to encircle around 2,000 soldiers. This information wasn't proved by the Russian sources. None of the Russian sources proved this information to be more precise. So it's some kind of information that we got from the Ukrainian side. Um, we, I think that we need to wait a little bit to get video and um, photo improvements of the situation. Uh, but if you take a look at the West Sources map, you're going to see that the town uh, that was encircled and, and was uh, where the Russians were encircled, according to this map, is under the Ukrainian control. So as you can see, uh, at least um, we can see that this might be some kind of speculation. But, of course, if we take a look at the Russian sources map, we're going to see that this sound is under the Russian control. You see that this one is a Kapulia. So, uh, from this point of view, there might be some um, interesting, might be some true. But, tell the truth, uh, I'm not sure about this because I haven't saw any video confirmation about that but as i as i told you let's wait a little bit if we're talking if we're talking about the map of disposition you're going to see that this is a capulian according to this map is also under ukrainian control so uh, two maps from three are saying that this town was on the ukrainians and according to the ukrainian sources they're saying that they managed to encircle 2000 soldiers in this area so i suppose that this might be some kind of uh, speculation now let's talk about very important update that i got from Kherson area from from the south of Ukraine today I saw the video from the Russian sources and this video was published in one of the most uh, popular Russian telegram channels military telegram channels um, and according to that video there was a guy uh, he was Ukrainian he is Ukrainian he is Ukrainian he said that he is from Odessa from this town Odessa um, he is fighting on the side of the Russians and the most important thing that he told that by this day, by let's say uh, this Friday, this guy, uh, the Ukraine, the Russian military authorities, we can say, or Kherson military authorities, authorities managed to create Odessa Brigade. They call these forces like Odessa Brigade. As you know, Brigade is about few battalions, so we can say that they managed to create some kind of forces, uh, some kind of brigade that includes only Ukrainians. Uh, he told that these Ukrainians, who is uh, part of this brigade, is from Nikolai, from Odessa, from Kiev. So we can say that uh, today we got first report that the Russians, under the Russian control, under the Russian um, vision, was created the first brigade that totally in, uh, has include just the Ukrainians and this guy told that they're planning to start offensive operation very soon towards Nikolaev and towards Odessa. Uh, those who is, um, is a member of my patron knows that my first video was about what is the Russian next step as soon as they uh, are able to release to liberate Donetsk. And my projection was that the Russians are planning 
uh, to continue this military special operation not under the Russian flag. I suppose my projection was that the Russians will try to create another proxy uh, in Ukraine and that this proxy would be under the Ukrainian flag, we could say, with some changes. And according to my projection, the Russians will try to continue the special operation um, we can say with the ally among Ukrainians. And my projection was that the Russians would try to encircle, first they will try to encircle Kharkiv. And uh, on the base, and they would do this to encircle Kharkiv just with the Ukrainian forces. So my projection was that the, the Russians would try to create some brigades, some forces on the basis of um, the forces who were um, who is the prisoners of war from the locals and they will call these forces somehow like Ukrainian army we could say and on the basis of this army they will try to encircle and to blockade Kharkiv but as far as I understand and according to the basis of this update I understand that the Russians created such forces and uh, like Ukrainian forces at just a brigade uh, on the basis of the um, of the forces who's located on the south and first these brigade are going to establish control this uh, Ukrainian brigade and uh, over Nikolaev and over Odessa so it's a very interesting update and I suppose that we should follow this situation because we see that the Russians are trying to reduce the forces that located in the south heavily first uh, my uh, opinion was that the Russians were trying to reduce the forces who are able to start offensive operations towards Kherson. Uh, we are talking about this 16 motorized brigade. This brigade was reinforced within Lao systems and so on. Uh, there are some Heimers in this area. As you can see, there are also 60, 63rd mechanized brigade, 14th mechanized brigade, 59th motorized brigade. Uh, this uh, 428th mechanized brigade. So the south is very enforced. So if we're talking about the disposition of the forces, we can say that yes, the Ukrainians are ready to start offensive operation in the south. But uh, maybe this um, uh, air attack, uh, rocket attack, and uh, uh, trying to reduce these forces by the Russians also um, may mean that the Russians maybe are preparing some offensive operation from their side towards Nikolaev and Odessa. So it's a very interesting situation and I'm sure that very soon we are going to find and to understand everything. Or or we are also can see something like the Ukrainians will uh, start their offensive operation. They might be defeated and of course according to the classic uh, as um, after any offensive operation we can see we might see counter offensive operation which might be much more successful than the offensive operation. It's usually it it, uh, it is done like this. Uh, now let's talk about our uh, Solidar Seversk Slavyansk, Kramatorsk about our Donbass arc operation. There were also a lot of updates from this area and one of the most important updates is that the Russians, of course they are fighting all along the front line, there is no changes as you can see on the map and if you take a look at the Russian sources map you're going to see that there is no changes as well, uh, there are just impacts. Uh, the only thing that I want to mention that the Ukrainians moved to Izum around four Heimers. They moved uh, to, to the town Petrovska, uh, Zavgorodnya in this area for Heimers and of course they are planning to use these Heimers to attack Izum because Izum is the central part of this Izum bridgehead and through this area the Russians are doing support, supply and so on. So of course they need to control or establish at least artillery control over this area trying to prevent and to destroy any supply that the Russians are planning to do uh, towards the Izum bridgehead because soon we know that the Russians are going to start the offensive operation towards Slavinsk. And if we're talking about this shared forest today, I got another report, another update from the Russian sources that they managed to control at least half of this forest. If we take a look at the West sources map, it's better to use this map just for update. And um, according to the Russian sources, they control something like this in this forest. So they passed more than 50% of this forest, established their position, and now they're trying and they're moving towards the south, trying to clear this forest as well. This area is under protection of uh, 81st Air Airborne Brigade. If you take a look at this map, this one, and this brigade has a lot of losses during, um, had a lot of losses during the previous weeks. If we're talking about uh, our Don Bosark operation, this area, there are a lot of changes in this area. Not uh, uh, there are no changes for on the front line. Uh, the only thing that the Ukrainian min military authorities uh, uh, confirmed and announced that starting today, starting this morning, military report that there are heavy clashes in Solidar. Uh, 
Not on the edge of Solidar, not around Solidar, but according to the report, there is a heavy clashes in Solidar. That means that the Russians is already in Solidar. I'm not saying that they control this town, but for sure they control the edge of this town and now they're fighting and pushing block by block in this town. If we are talking about um, other front lines, there are no changes if we are talking about the um, the territory expansion, but there are if we if we take a look at the map of this position There are a lot of changes on this map a lot of changes on this map And first of all as you can see the Ukrainians moved their Azov battalion towards Slavyansk uh, We haven't um, there were no Azov battalion um, on the previous version of this map This Azov battalion was located on the south in near uh, Zaporozhye or some forces were near Kharkiv but starting this version and this map is on the 21st of July yes 21st of July so yesterday evening and according to this update the Ukrainians moved Azov battalion to protect Slavyansk furthermore now there is an uh, icon showing us that Kraken is here uh, the Kraken was moved a few days ago and they're trying to protect and to control the highlands uh, that located on the west from Severs. It's the most important highlands um, uh, on this area. And using these highlands, the uh, Ukrainians are able to fix and control the Russians who are planning to storm Severs. And the Russians are saying that it's a very big problem for them because the Ukrainians are establishing their artillery on the west side of these highlands. So that's why the Russians can't see them. They can't see them and it's very difficult to get the uh, Ukrainian artillery. But if you're talking about the Ukrainians, of course, they are using the west uh, side of the hills and um, they are established their, their artillery and they're trying to stop and to fix the Russians who are moving and pushing towards uh, this line Seversk Solidar. Another important update from this area is with this 115th mechanized brigade on the we uh, we couldn't see this brigade on the previous version of this map this brigade came from um, zaporozhye as far as i remember according to this table yes zhitomir this brigade was located in zhitomir and now this brigade is located in seversk as you can see the ukrainians moved their mechanized brigade to reinforce forces in seversk trying to stop the russians who are pushing towards seversk another important update is about this uh, 58th motorized brigade in the previous version of this map this the main base of this 58th motorized brigade was in Seversk this one so as you can see the Ukrainians moved this as soon as they got some reinforcement from 115th mechanized brigade they moved their motorized brigade towards Solidar and now this brigade with this brigade the Ukrainians are trying to stop the Russians who is attacking Solidar, Pakrovskaya, Yakvelka, Vesele, uh, Bilogorovka and so on. Another important update are coming from the middle part of this area. If you remember in this area there was just one tank brigade, force tank brigade that locates, still locates in Artemovsk. We haven't heard any updates about the loss of this brigade and according to the version of this map the Ukrainians moved the first tank brigade um, towards Konstantinovka as well. But recently uh, this brigade was located uh, near uh, Zaporozhye near Velika Novoselovka town and as you can see there are still icons showing us that this brigade is here so as I understand the Ukrainians stretched this brigade and some battalions were moved towards Artemovsk to protect uh, the Ukrainians uh, to stop the Russian breakthrough in this area. Uh, if we are talking about other important updates, uh, more updates, more news, bad news are coming from Uglidarska power plant. The 72nd mechanized brigade is reduced till zero, I can say. So the Ukrainians are moving this brigade out of this territory uh, to reinforce this area. And according to the information I have, this brigade is no longer... Uh, the Ukrainians won't send this brigade back. They will try to send this brigade towards the south because uh, towards Donetsk because as we can see because of the fact that Ukrainians um, reduced the defense in this area by moving some tank battalion to this area. So that's why now they're moving a uh, few mechanized brigade battalions towards the south just to be on the safe side and not to give the Russians opportunity to break through in the south because of course we understand that by moving tank brigade from the south now the Russians have great chance to break through in this area because this area has less defense potential in this um, from now on. 
another important update about 114th Defense Brigade, this one. Uh, to tell the truth, if we take a look at this map of this position, uh, today I understood that uh, the weakest point in this defense brigade, in this defense structure of the Ukrainians, is New York. Town Novgorodska, Artemovska, this area is the weakest point in the Russian's defense system. Of course, if we take a look at the Russian sources map, you're gonna see that this area is totally fortified with trenches and so on, but these two areas, if you take a look at the map disposition, is protected by 114th Defense Brigade, and today we got report that uh, the Ukrainians stretched these forces and they moved few battalions from New York towards Slavyansk to reinforce the forces who is uh, fighting with the Russians on the Izum bridgehead. And if we're talking about 46 Iron Assault Brigade, yes, it's uh, fresh-blooded forces. There were no updates during the previous few weeks about the loss in this brigade. So I must say that, yes, this brigade is pretty powerful, pretty fresh, and they are able to hold. But it's Air Assault Brigade, and as you can see, in this area there is no mechanized brigade, just maybe tank brigade, who can stop the Russians. So maybe, maybe because of that fact that this fort area is protected by just the troops without mechanized and tank brigades. Maybe the Russians will try to break through this area as well. Because if you're talking about the Russian force in this area, uh, there is first tank battalion uh, by the name of Somali, and there are a few motorized and BTG and motorized brigade from their side. So of course they have much bigger, uh, bigger f fire potential than the uh, the Ukrainian has. So. So this area is very important and very interesting and I see that Ukrainians did everything to reduce uh, the defense of this area uh, from their side, defense potential from their side. Uh, another important update from the Russian sources is that today in the report of Ministry of Defense they said that they managed to destroy from since the beginning of this special operation up to four HIMARS. It's very important, of course. We know that there are not much HIMARS in this area, and uh, at least we can say 30% of them uh, has already been destroyed. Another important update from Odessa. Today you know that the, um, uh, we can say, C agreement, the wealth agreement were signed, and starting um, very soon we are going to see that the Ukrainians are planning to move wealth from the Odessa support uh, towards the, uh, uh, the, rest, the rest of the world. Of course, every single ship will be under Russian control, under under uh, the Turkish control, Ukrainian and Russian and uh, UN control. So uh, I suppose that we won't see any ammunition or any tanks or vehicles in these ships. And it's very nice, good news and a very good piece of piece of news because, uh, of course, we know that. Uh, the wealth from Odessa should be taken out and uh, should move transfer to the rest of the world because we see that there are a lot of problems with the food in, in the world according to of course to the according to the media and that's it for today uh, thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes military summary channel and I remind you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine join my patreon and have a good weekend bye bye